Alrighty, so in the Green Revolution notes, I did talk about how um, I was going to have another lesson talking about the impacts of agriculture. Here is that lesson. And note, eutrophication is a term you're going to hear a lot from now on. So, there are multiple steps in the process of producing food that do, it, you know, have this environmental impact. So, one thing is tilling which is also known as turning over the soil. Um, here you see kind of a tractor that is tilling, creating these furrows in the earth that can then be uh, planted. Um, unfortunately, while it is useful and while it is something that's been done for agriculture for thousands and thousands of years, it does disrupt the soil structure so that, you know, you're breaking through the soil, you can cause some harm to beneficial soil organisms. Um, then since you're kind of disturbing the vegetation cover, that's going to increase erosion and that's also going to increase runoff. So when you remove topsoil or when you disturb the topsoil, that's going to decrease infiltration and that leads to increased runoff. And then when you don't have plant cover, then you're going to expose the soil to increased erosion with wind and water. Uh, then slash and burn farming can also have a large impact. Basically, for slash and burn farming, you cut down all the trees, you burn what's left, and then you grow uh, crops in the kind of ashes of what you burn down. Those ashes are important because they do add nutrients to the soil. But unfortunately, what will happen is you're disrupting the normal nutrient cycling in the area. And so over the next several years, you're going to end up depleting the nutrients so that you have to clear new land. Um, when you clear the land um, until you grow the crops there, you're going to have increased soil erosion. Um, you're going to have increased runoff. You're going to disturb local habitats for organisms in the area. And you run the risk of having invasive species coming. Coming in. Um, and then you have to continuously clear new land to replace that uh, land in which the nutrients have been depleted. So slash and burn farming is only kind of effective if you don't have a huge population. So um, I've read some things that uh, hypothesize that before Europeans came to uh, the Americas, a lot of the indigenous cultures in the area managed um, some of the grasslands that we think of as native uh, through slash and burn. Um, so they would clear land that way. Otherwise, more of the continent would have been forested. However, their populations were smaller, so it had less of an impact. The The population sizes that we're at now, um, the, the land that we're using for agriculture has to pretty much be continuously used. Um, and so slash and burn is not really an effective process, uh, practice in agriculture now. Monoculture, we've talked about a couple of times. It's when you grow only one variety of plant. So you have limited crop varieties. They have low genetic diversity, and that causes lots of problems. One, there's less biodiversity. And if you're only growing one plant, um, then that is going to... Um, kind of handicap the area and that you're not mimicking the natural diversity of ecosystems. Keep in mind, you want some natural organisms in the area. What about pollinators? Um, if you have predators of your pest, you would like to have them stay alive, but, you know, hopes to have a functioning ecosystem for that. Uh, and unfortunately, diseases and pests spread very rapidly. And since all of your plants are pretty much genetically similar, if not genetically identical, if one of those plants is vulnerable to a pest, all of them are. So you can have diseases spread rapidly and just wipe out entire crops. Um, fertilizer is uh, going to have a big impact. So synthetic fertilizers like um you know, what you buy from Home Depot or Lowe's are very easy for plants to assimilate, but they can also dissolve in water really easily and run off. And then farmers will usually add, uh, you know, air on the side of caution and add more fertilizer than it's needed by the plants. And that causes a problem because that extra then runs off into local waterways. And then you might think, oh, hey, it's just a little extra food. That's not a bad thing. 
but it actually can be because when you have those high nutrient levels in water, that can cause something called an algal bloom and something else called cultural eutrophication. By the way, if you've ever looked at some fertilizer and wondered what these numbers are on the front, they tell you the relative amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, so that's something to pay attention to uh, if you are buying fertilizer. But let's talk about eutrophication because that's a huge impact of farming. What basically happens is you have nutrients run off into surface water. Eventually, all water leads to the ocean. And when that all collects in the ocean, those nutrients, nutrients are a limiting factor for uh, marine uh, ecosystems. So when you have an influx of nutrients, the algae population just explodes. That causes something called an algal bloom. Tons of algae. You might think, oh, hey, that'll give plenty of food for, you know, the consumers in the ecosystem. But there's some other consequences. So when you have a ton of algae, uh, they can actually cover the surface of the water and they block sunlight for plants that are lower down in the water column, killing those, um, which would reduce the amount of food for primary consumers. Then some algae and then also some photosynthetic bacteria called cyanobacteria can produce toxins that when you have an algal bloom, they build up in high enough concentrations to start killing organisms. But here is the really big problem. Eventually, those algae are going to use up the nutrients and they're going to die and they're going to get decomposed. But unfortunately, decomposition uses dissolved oxygen. When you use up the dissolved oxygen in an area, that creates something called hypoxia. Hypoxia means you don't have oxygen. Um, and the thing is, all the organisms living in the water, unless they're like anaerobic, which is mostly bacteria, all the animals, all the plants, they need oxygen in order to survive. So when you have all the oxygen gone from a, a marine ecosystem, then that creates these dead zones. And these dead zones are like sites of massive fish death. Um, you know, crustaceans like crabs, lobsters, they die. Um, some of the bivalves like uh, oysters, clams, they die. And so you're just really disrupting these marine ecosystems quite a bit also impacting fishing uh for any farmers i mean any fishermen who are you know using that area to uh, catch fish or shrimp or anything like that another problem with decomposition is that it's just plain old cellular respiration remember it's you know your glucose c6h12o6 plus oxygen, and then its byproducts are CO2 and H2O. The problem is when you have a lot of CO2 in the water, like you do with all that decomposition, that makes an acid which lowers the ocean's pH. And ocean acidification is a really big problem. Um, if things aren't at the right pH, they can start to get sick, uh, which makes them e you know, more easily able to catch diseases. And another thing is when the ocean is too acidic, um, then organisms that build shells can't build them effectively. So let's look at this in detail because eutrophication is something you may have to actually explain in uh, an FRQ. And so I want you to know the steps. So what happens is nutrients run off into the water. Then those high nutrient levels cause algal blooms, huge population expansion of algae, which can then block sunlight or some of them can even produce toxins. Um, and so that will kill the other native plants in the area. But unfortunately, once they use up the nutrients, those algae die. Once they die, they're going to be decomposed. And the decomposers are going to use up all the dissolved oxygen, which creates a hypoxic condition. That hypoxia, remember, is where you don't have enough oxygen. So without oxygen, you're going to have all the local marine life suffocate. They can't get enough oxygen into their bodies and they die. Another thing that's not on this diagram is also that uh, creates acid from the CO2 that's produced during decomposition, and that's going to lower the ocean pH as well. So eutrophication is bad all around. Um, you may want to watch this part of the video multiple times because you are going to be expected to be able to describe cultural eutrophication. And it's not just going to be an impact from agriculture. It's any time you have excess nutrients in water. All right, that's it. And I know my bitmoji at the end usually reflects the lesson. But I couldn't think of a good one, and I really like that platypus. So me and that platypus 
seem to be plotting against you.